All right, we're still at uh, 32 amp hours. Uh, we've done a mile, and our average speed is three miles an hour. Our max speed was five, but sun's going down. I've been pulling Amy for a little while, so I'm pulling her. Uh, her seat broke, right? It was an old strap that snapped on there, and so she's like, I'm really uncomfortable. I'm like, well, let me just pull you. And so I'm at 5.78 amps. We're doing three miles an hour, and I'm pulling a Hobie Revolution 12. I could literally do this all day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful day on the lake, uh, about eight o'clock in the morning. Sun's out already. I'm trying to get this long range test done, but pulling Amy around and I, I just, we didn't use any power. So what we have here is 29 amp hours, 93% uh, charge and we're pulling no amps. I was just pulling five. So throughout this video, we'll be checking back in with the range test and then I'm gonna put in a lot of different stuff. So there's been a ton of comments and questions um, and people want a lot of information. We're gonna be providing that, but we're also gonna be showing you some of the stuff that's coming up for the rest of the motors we're testing. So guys, I don't want you to spend any money on any of this stuff yet because I've found flaws and you're gonna see those flaws on some pretty expensive equipment coming up in this video. So just be patient, wait until this series is over and then you'll have a reliable kayak setup that you can take out on the water. I'm gonna run about anywhere between one and five miles an hour today. And that number right there, distance, that's what we're going for. So I'll throttle up to like five miles an hour, four miles an hour. Still says we're doing one. Three. Yeah, this thing's off. This is definitely not three miles an hour, guys. Four, there we go. That's more realistic. Let's run it there. Um, this is a good clip. I think that's a good speed. So right now we're pulling out of the pack 6.52 amps. Okay, so I want to pause right here and talk about this meter because I'm not sure if I really go into it. The percentage at the top, 93%, is how much charge we have left in our battery after running three miles the night before. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. 29 amp hours is what our capacity is of that battery. And as you'll see throughout the video, the 29 will lower. It will go down and down until it reaches zero. The voltage is on the far left at the bottom, which is 24.9 volts. The amps we're drawing is the 6.56 amps that you see there. And the amount of watts we're pulling is the 164. So that's 164 watts. Right above that is 433. That is four hours and 33 minutes. That means that at this particular power consumption, it will take us four hours and 33 minutes to run the battery down to 0%. So just based on the information that we have on the screen in front of us, here's what we know. We can do five times 433. So we're doing five miles an hour right now. So that gives us about 21 extra miles of range. So we would have gone about 24 miles of range on this pack not at low speed, not at the lowest setting, but at five miles an hour. That would be the top speed on this kayak of a Torquedo. That's pretty darn impressive. And this is the tiny pack. And so we're just gonna let it run like that and see what happens. We'll pull over in a little while, check the heat, and I'm just gonna tootle around. This is my day. This is awesome. Okay, I know there's a lot of trees out here. There's this lane I'm supposed to stay in and I'm way out of it. Um, so I might slow it down a touch. So we've popped a couple trees with the transom. That's cool, that's fine. We've had one shutter where the entire motor stopped for a second and then wouldn't kick back up. That's probably timing, so we probably need to adjust the timing. I didn't bring the um, controller to adjust the timing, so you have a little program box, you just plug it in, you adjust the timing. And we're set at 10 degrees right now, and that just advances the motor a little bit and helps it to understand where it's at, um, where the stator and rotor are in position to each other so that the motor knows you know, what to do, essentially. It's a three-phase motor. But this is a sensorless motor, so it can shudder a little on startup. But when you raise the timing from zero, every little notch you get up, you end up with more heat and more amps. And I think we can put it to like between 10 and 16. But every time you add a little bit to that number, you produce more heat and you draw more amps. But at low speed, the motor actually runs more, um, it's less efficient, but it's more controlled. It doesn't, it doesn't hunt, it doesn't look for you know that that perfect way to run and when you first start it it'll, it'll kind of shudder a little bit 
at low speed. That's not good. It's not bad, but it's not good. I can, but I can hear it happening. I haven't given this a high speed run uh, because I'm trying to just to see where we're at number wise. Ah, oh, shade. Much better. We're going to follow this entire line all the way around the lake and then have to come back. Hopefully I'm not paddling all the way back. So another thing this is going to test is weeds in the prop, guys. Um, because when you're up here next to the shore, that's where more of the weed beds are. So that's kind of cool. Ah, oh, so beautiful out today now. Like as soon as I got in the shade, I'm like, oh, it's just a beautiful day. <laughs> We're gonna continue the long range small battery test here in a minute. Now I call this the small battery test because it has 24 cells in it that are 8,000 milliamp hour, okay? The big battery pack I'm building from batteryhookup.com has 120 eight amp hour cells. It's gonna be ridiculous. Like I, the thing would run for a week. So anyway, so you definitely wanna stay tuned for that. So I went out to the lake the other day and installed a new system and we did some testing. Unfortunately, we had some issues, some manufacturer defect issues that really killed us. But I wanna go ahead and show you the video and then show you what happened. Also, I added a hydrofoil because of the whole design of the boat and we hit plane. And you're going to see it with your own eyes. This is where all the other videos you've seen, the maximum speed we hit was about 8.5. On this day, I hit 10.5. I was testing without the camera, so I didn't record any of it. I hit 10.5, and, and then my buddy jumped on there. He's 160, and he was able to hit 11.5. And, and in the end of this video, as he's pulling off, right before we had our problem, you can see the boat hit plane. It's incredible. You'll actually get to watch it happen. So enjoy watching a kayak overcome the bow wake and actually hit plane. <laughs> oh my God, it's so awesome. What speed did you hit? 11.5. Okay, come over here. I'm gonna trim the seat forward. Or actually, all you do is right in front of you right here, you can stay out there, just turn it. Right in front of you, there's a couple uh, nuts, uh, wing nuts. Mm -hmm. Loosen those and slide your seat forward. And then slide it all the way forward and then lock it down. Oh, there's no reverse, by the way. You gotta use the paddle. This thing rips, man. This thing rips, right? Yeah, like, the, the, that's the, fast. The soon to be released um, $3,000, 1,000 watts, uh, what's it called? Torquedo can hit 6.9. <laughs> They said they saw seven at one point. I'm just so happy it actually did it. My number was 10 miles an hour, dude. I got 11.3. Oh, yes! That's awesome. All right. Just nail it from here. Nail it. Full throttle. Wow. It's plainy. David Christensen Jr. on YouTube. Go check him out. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, give us the rundown, dude. Tell us what you thought. Basically, all I'd say is the thing rips, man. Like, it, it was surprising for how fast it actually went. Man, it's, this thing's wicked. Um, maybe a quick little trim on it. Yeah, go into the trim. Like, okay, so you hit 11 miles an hour, and I watched the water line come from over here, and I watched it go back. And tell me what tell me what that was like. About 11, 11.3, the water line came up, started coming through here, and I felt myself rise. But then it starts to be, it basically starts to form a vacuum underneath the boat. The water being pushed forward as it's being swept under by the water. Yeah. And so it starts sucking water up through the little holes to vent the water out. No big deal. But if we had some sort of trim on it, basically it'd be act as a transmission because you don't have a transmission for an engine like this, where you could adjust your height or your angle of which the motor pushes into the water, raising the front end or lowering it when you get to speeds, and it'd be. It'd be the next step for this thing, that, really. that is exactly what I felt when I was out here. So what I did was, I didn't have it. Remember, guys, I told you I wanted to make it trimmable. So what I did was I gave myself, there's a little piece of metal back here, and I just taped it in, like, just to give it a little more oomph. Okay, back to the drawing board for the 37th time. So that's not cool. That's leaking right there. And uh, the reason why is you can just loosen it by hand. So yeah, totally loose, just loose. My connections are good. 
They're all loose. Look at this. The whole bottom is absolutely soaking wet. There's no way water can get in here. There wasn't any splashing. We're missing that much water. I filled it up before I left. Um, it was this. And all the batteries are just wet. Not good. I'm very, like, that is, that is very bad. Look at this, look. So, these lines right here were loose and it sprayed water all inside and got every single one of my batteries wet. And three of them no longer work. And um, yeah, I'm pretty, like this is not good guys. They were just loose and they squirted water everywhere. This is not good, this doesn't work anymore. Um, we, gotta, we gotta fix this problem, brand new. But you cannot do this, you cannot leave these loose. I was having some problems, I couldn't quite understand it. I opened the box up and it's full of water. And I'm like, what happened? How did water get in? So I start looking around on the sides and I don't see any water. And then I can kind of see, I'm like, okay, well this is probably coming from my water system, but I know those fittings weren't leaking when I left because I, I, I pushed them on there really good and I tested them. So I turned the pump on and sure enough, I could see it dripping water out of those fittings. So I was like, okay, my rubber hose wasn't tight enough and I've just damaged this thing. Well, it wasn't my rubber hose. It was the fittings that screw into it. But this video was not meant for you guys. It was meant for the manufacturer so that they could see it and take care of it under warranty. But the manufacturer told me that I needed to kick rocks. And um, thank you very much for the money. We appreciate it. We're glad you got tons of enjoyment out of this product. And have a nice day. Now, having said that, that's not the manufacturer of this product. Manufacturer does want to see this video. They are curious because their name's at stake. I didn't tell anyone about the YouTube channel when I started this stuff off. Um, I just said, hey, here's a problem. Please fix it. Would you like to see the video? They said, no, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, and that was about it. Uh, I, think, I think it was like, not our problem, your problem. And, um, which is hilarious because their warranty clearly covers this clearly covers it so i don't have time to mess with these crazy crappy chinese um website developing guys that have 50 websites and they just buy random products throw them out there and then sell them um so i bought it from a more reputable dealer i just went ahead and purchased the next one and got that one coming and i'm dealing with the manufacturer as we go so uh i Worst case scenario, we can warranty this through the manufacturer because I have all of my data from all the times that I've been talking to the other company trying to get my money back or get them to fix it. I can tell you this, the manufacturer is more interested in protecting their reputation, uh, which I think any manufacturer would be. This is a pretty big channel and I never brought up the YouTube stuff to anyone but the manufacturer. I was curious if Maytech, the manufacturer, had even heard from these guys and apparently not. Um, they didn't even, they just turned down the warranty issue claim and just didn't want to mess with it. Maytech actually manufactures the part, so it's their warranty that's on the line, right? It's their company that's on the line. They've worked hard to build this business. The other guys, they don't care about Maytech. They don't care about me. So this is why I keep telling you guys, let me go through all this stuff. Just wait. I'll tell you which ones work. I'll tell you which company works. And if Maytech can't solve this issue... If Maytech can't solve it, then I will tell you guys, just don't even bother purchasing through them. There are other options and um, that you just don't want to buy their product or they're going to handle it. They're going to stand behind it. And this system might turn out to be the perfect solution for everything we want to do. I will say this. Do not buy these products from any other website other than Maytech. That's the only, pro I don't care what, if it saves you $30, here's what it gets you. Nothing. You get nothing. You don't get a manual. I said, hey, where's the manual? They're like, we'll ship that after this one gets to you. I was like, well, I've had it for four days. There's no manual. I went to Maytech's website and I was able to find it easily. They have all their information there. So programming was super simple. I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how this ends, guys. Hopefully it'll all pan out okay. Regardless, I've got a new one coming. And that's just because I can't. Like this, this project has to move forward. We're running out of, of summer, we're heading into fall, and if we don't get this uh, back on the water soon, we're gonna have problems. So that was really cool, right? Okay, so there is a common misconception that kayaks are displacement holes. If my kayak was a displacement hole, I could not hit, via, via calculations, I could not hit over four miles an hour, right? It's a simple math equation. You just plug in some numbers, the length of your kayak, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, so this is a fishing kayak. It's designed for stability. If my hole was a displacement hole, it would be like this dippy round hole, and it would not be very stable in the water for the length and the width that it is. So what they've done is they designed chines in there and all kinds of stuff to make it super stable. And the entire section of the boat, from the front of the boat all the way to about where... The seat is behind the seat and back is 100%. If you cut that boat off right there, it would be just like a speedboat. It would be. The problem is the back tapers off, right? And it's to allow water to slip back in, to slip back behind there. So we have to overcome that because we don't have the square stern of a boat, right? There's a lot of support on the rear of a boat, which helps you get up on plane and stay on plane. I added this stupid freaking 10 minute hydrofoil that I built and it changed everything as well as adding one more set of packs to it so we upped the voltage seven volts we're still under like we're still a third of the power capacity for this so sky's the limit so once the new speed controller is here we'll be back out on the water testing and I'm going to start adding more voltage to the system and watch my heat I've got temperature probes we've got voltmeters we got everything that we need to make sure that we're not frying anything this project has just begun I've ordered two more motors on top of the ones I'm testing now and it's just I can't wait, man. I'm so excited. And everything that you're looking at so far has been prototyping. So I haven't made it pretty and I haven't made it cool and I haven't added all the other things that are coming. I'm doing electric tilt and trim. That's one thing that we noticed in this video. When it hit 11.5, I mean, it was just perfect. It was there. If we had another half a mile an hour or we could add tilt and trim to this, it would have done the trick. So I'm adding tilt and trim. We're adding more power and I'm getting rid of the steering setup I have. It works okay and it's better now that I extended it, but I want to do a stick steer on this and I want that to be available for you guys as well. And I really am thinking about selling these. So, so while mine looks like this huge beefy beefcake, it only weighs about five pounds, like the whole mount because it's aluminum and it doesn't need to be that big. I just got a heck of a deal at the scrapyard on this stuff, so it was perfect for prototyping. And being thick lends itself to being adaptable. So I can get in there and drill a hole through it, tap it, as opposed to welding on a part and then tapping that. So there's a lot of reasons why going bigger on your prototype is better. Super exciting stuff on the way. This is just the beginning. Hopefully within the next month I will have worked out all the kinks in this system and we'll be good to go. But man, it's just exciting. It's exciting. I think no one's done this before because... Everybody says you can't do it. A kayak can't plane. Uh, they're displacement holes. A kayak can't hit over seven miles an hour. Like, that's just what everybody says because that's what's been done. Um, yeah, it's wrong. It's all wrong. We just started and we've just scratched the surface of what we're capable of and it's already, it's impressive. Ah, oh, just got a bunch of stuff in the mail. Got a new ESC there. Got a bunch of different clips. All kinds of stuff. Got some Corrosion X. I got some cool heat sinks. Uh, this is incredible. And also, the next upcoming video is going to be a really, really awesome install of the Mr. Cool air conditioner unit I keep telling you guys about. So if you want an air conditioner in your shop, or you've got a hot room in your house, or you want an air conditioner in your garage, these units are perfect for that. But Mr. Cool doesn't just make mini splits. They have like full geothermal systems and everything. I'll put a link in the description to their website, and also a link in the description for like the size air conditioner for your place. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, we just made it a mile, so that's good. Good four miles an hour. Went from 93 to 87%, so there's some data for us. And um, we're pushing 182 watts at uh, four miles an hour using 7.4 amps. And we're at 24.6 volts. So we have a ton of power left. Um, it's gonna be one of those long days. Maybe I'll get it to 50% today, I don't know. Hopefully that'll give us enough data. That's a good thing about the curve on these batteries at this speed is it's not terrible. Um, we're not drawing a ton of amps, so it's not like it's going to drop power on us. It's just going to go until I tell it to shut off. And I have it set conservatively at 3.4, but we're never going to get anywhere near that. We're probably not even going to crest like four and a half, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Ooh, we got weeds in the prop. <laughs> I can hear them crunching. So I ran right, right through some weeds, so that's a good thing. Um, now at three miles an hour, we're at 11 amps. 
So it is adding some torque to it. We got to find a spot to pull over. Get these clear. Okay. So we're doing three, but we're at 10 amps. So we definitely got something in the prop. We're gonna hit the boat dock. Okay, so I brought a temperature gun for you. First thing we're gonna test is the temperature of that water. 84 degrees, staying nice and cool. Water temperature outside is kind of undetectable. All right, let's check our wires. 114 degrees on the wire. Check our connection. 109, 123. 128. This is where we usually see heat. Very nice. 93. Let's check the shunt. 93. Check the speed controller. 150. 149. Let's feel it. Oh, yeah. She's warm. I would definitely call that warm. Batteries are ice cold. And just to show you, we had a lot of people concerned about batteries. So 77 degrees, that's lower than the ambient air temperature, like here, 96 degrees right there on the dock. And people were saying, well, they're in a black case. It's gonna make everything hotter. There's your answer. No, I've been out here as long as the dock's been out here and it's good to go. So, 83 this should be a lot hotter starting to wonder it's moving water well let's see where it's at right now oh it's already cool 107 105 caps are at 148 so when i came let's see what the hoses are 97 105 so that's your in and out when I came up to the dock um, I actually blasted it up to 15 amps yeah it's way colder this is working really good the caps are still hot but this is really cold um, well it's 100 went from 150 to 100 so over there from the edge of that weed line all the way to here I just opened it full throttle and we hit 8 miles an hour we got a top speed of 8 you'll be able to see that but from there to here Eight miles an hour, pulling all those amps. Um, she got warm. That's what she's supposed to do. And we'll let her cool down. <laughs> the reason we pulled over was the weeds in the prop. So we got to get those out of there. There you go. Here's your cabbage. It will absolutely eat cabbage. Okay, so I got socks and sandals on. They're not even the same socks. Isn't that awesome? That's what happens when you just don't care. So here we are, 2.2 miles. We're at 70% of the battery. And we have 22 amp hours remaining in the pack. That's plenty of battery. Um, I do not like this guy. I, I can, I can literally. It says four miles an hour. There, I can shut it down to two miles an hour, or I can raise it up to six miles an hour, and it still says four miles an hour. So we're gonna dump this app. We're gonna get a better app. My buddy was telling me that there's a lot of bass back here in this cove. I guess this is probably pretty deep right here. So we're going to kick back into this cove and take a look. I don't have my fishing license on me. Um, I, I don't renew it for a few days. And so I'm not going to be doing any fishing. Yeah, I can see some stumps and stuff. It's pretty deep. That's a good looking cove. It's deep all the way back. All right, let's turn around. This thing will turn on a dime. It turns within its own footprint. Like, no problem. Look at that. Straighten her back up.
I kicked it up to five miles an hour. I like that. 2.23 miles. And 21 amp hours remaining at 67%. So we're drawing 20 amps right now from the battery pack at five miles an hour. So that kind of gives you an idea as to where this particular motor lies. And um, this is about what five miles an hour looks like on the boat. And that's above the top speed. That's above the top speed I think Big Speed Jet would do on this. Uh, and right at the top speed with this kayak that I think Torquedo would do. Now, Torquedo has a 100 watt coming, or a 1,000 watt coming out soon. Um, we are currently training 466 watts. So I think they're, they're at 500 watts. So let's do 500 watts. Okay, we're at 509 watts. We don't have proper speed, but we're doing 500 or five miles an hour. So, you know, there's prop differences and everything like that. But from what I understand, five miles an hour is about what we'll get. Your thousand watt motor gets in the six to seven mile an hour range on a bona fide kayak, is what I've heard. So, let's uh, see if we can get a thousand watts. Whoa! Four thousand watts. <laughs> I never looked at that number before. Holy crap, we just shoved 4,000 watts down her throat. That's incredible. She can handle 13, uh, motor can handle 13,000 watts. Guys, we're only on three lipos right now. Like three, we're, we're at 20, in the 20 volt range. We're not anywhere near the insane uh, 16S capacity of this. We're, <laughs> we're at a 6S. So we can add 10 more uh, 3.4 cells in series. So really awesome, super exciting. So I think where we're at right now is this is a good representation of bouncing all over a lake. We've almost went from one end all the way to the other. And then I think we're gonna be able to go back. Um, this is kind of like how you would fish this lake. Oh, we've only been running for 48 minutes, but it's been a solid 48 minute run. So I don't know how many of you guys would actually run for 48 minutes straight and not fish throughout. So a pack this size is totally big enough for an entire day fishing without question. I think it can get you where you need to go. We'll check the numbers at the end, but I think this will do for a lot of you guys. It certainly has enough power. Eight miles an hour is faster than you're going to get on anything else. So I like this pack. I like this setup. I think it's good. And this is a safe. So far, it feels very, very safe and usable. With the exception of the bearings and the motor and this thing being underwater, um, which I'm, is why I'm suggesting you guys don't purchase anything yet, let me destroy this motor. You don't need to do it. Let me do it. Let me see how long it lasts. 155 watts and we are at 6.7 amps right so 51 percent so far we've traveled somewhere in the neighborhood of four or five miles um not really sure we'll check it at the end of the trip i'm gonna go ahead and run her down to zero and let the battery alarm go off and then we'll know for sure um, what the range of this pack is so a couple more hours out here at this rate guys oh it's absolutely calm still out here so the other GPS was off without question. Um, I say in three when I'm hitting four, roughly. So we're, our average speed says three miles an hour. Our average speed is closer to like four and a half to five because we bursted speed a little bit. So we know that that's wrong. And we know that I'm currently tracking at four miles an hour or three and a half, four to four and a half. So it varies a little bit, but that's a pretty good speed for drawing 155 watts. I'm pretty happy with that. And we're still at 51%, which means we haven't even used half of our batteries. Any of your e-product packs are going to be larger packs. This one, it's a large pack if you're running an RC car, but it's not a large pack to do what we're doing. But the range is incredible. Like, it's enough. Like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't need to take a whole bunch of batteries with me for a trip and load everything down. I could just take a couple. So that's a really good thing. Um, I say a couple. I mean a couple when I build my big pack. I've got 46%. Uh, I should be able to get 14 amp hours. So if, if I ran 14 amps for an hour, we would be out in an hour. And uh, I might end up trying to do that just to try to push it and see where we get range-wise. And she is currently hitting 13 amps, 297 watts, and we're at 45%. So we should have about an hour remaining at this speed. This thing's blinking. And it's warning me that I'm at 31%. It considers that low. I don't remember if I set an alarm at that particular amount, but that's what's going on, so. Yeah, I think I have it set at 10 amp hours. 
That's exactly how I have it set. So that's my alarm. Oh, so it's like noon now and the sun's really beating down. So, oh, cabbage, cabbage, turn, turn, turn. That's not good. So the sun's really beating down and I'm going to head back uh, to shore. I think I've done 10 miles total, something like that. And I still have 30%. I started in the middle of the lake, went all the way to the other side, came all the way back to the other side. And now I'm going back to the middle. So that's uh, more than I'll ever need just in this pack. And I got a big pack coming. It's going to be very interesting to figure out like how the big motor does. I can't wait for the new parts to come in. Um, and, and get that thing operational and actually in the water on the kayak. It was a shame that that happened. I'm, I'm very sad about it, but it is what it is. 30% and guys, right now with the amps I'm pulling, we have one hour and 25 minutes remaining. <laughs> I, I'm gonna kick it up a notch. I'm not gonna stay out here for an hour and 25 minutes. Let's see, uh, four miles an hour. We can get six more miles out of this at this speed. I mean, what do you want? That's what 16 18 miles I could go on this pack that's if I didn't rev it up or I wasn't trying to like push it hard half like I don't know I had like four little jaunts where I just like would kick it up to eight miles an hour and have a blast Ooh, fish are jumping one two three four and they were hitting over here when I was here earlier this is where this motor is perfect because you just dial it up you see the fish jumping you just fly over there kill the motor Toss your lure, bam, right there. Look at that, look at him jump. Let's go catch him. Let's watch. If you wanna get over there fast. That's where they were. <laughs> So I do want to play with the timing a little bit. I think I'm going to throw a little more timing into it. And I'm going to show you why. Let's shut it down. I want you to listen to the shutter. Okay, so just listen to this. Hear that? Until you hit six amps, it really doesn't want to do anything. It doesn't want to... Um, it's not getting the feedback from the motor. So we have to be at six amps. Uh, I had a comment. One of the guys does offshore fishing, and he wanted to um, get his troll speed up. And uh, he's using a Bixby jet right now. Um, this is your solution. This is definitely your solution. So this this will work really well. But I'd go with the the other motor that I'm using, assuming that it works out okay. I'm not even going to chance using that other motor on this speed control, just because they were built for each other. So we're not we're not even going to play with it. I'm sure it would work, um, and I'm sure it would work fine. But as of now, the only thing, because of warranty reasons, the only thing that's touching that motor is the speed controller that came with it. So listen to that. You hear that? It's really loud. We're having some issues. I think we may have spun a bearing. Ooh, I don't know. There might be something in the prop. It's real jerky. Might be overheated. Might be electronics. I'm not sure, but we're right by shore. Let's go check it out. It's not good. So I keep doing it. <laughs> number one comment in this video so you keep doing it yeah let's destroy stuff it means we get something to fix don't be afraid about breaking things if you can fix them also we need to know if after one day this is going to destroy on you guys Oof. okay so we're at the boat launch and um yeah we had a problem with the motor my camera overheated too so i couldn't even use it it got hot out there it got real hot um, top of the case was 135 degrees and um, what I was previously thinking about doing is just covering that with a cloth um, just so the sun doesn't hit it and then that'll take care of the heat thing on it or paint it white but um, I don't really think that that was the issue I don't think the ESC was the issue the ESC was only at like 120 degrees um, at the hottest spot the average spot was lower than that um, I do know that my recirculating pump that we pulled off the car it died that was expected but I was able to monitor that um, and that makes me want to put in a flow meter that way I know I have flow so we're gonna add a flow meter to the next system as well and I'm building a really really cool um, uh, cooling system for this it's gonna be real neat you guys will like it a lot so our problem lies inside the motor so what happened some of that tape come out did we lose some bearings sounds like bearings to me there's no telling 
could have even sucked something up into the motor. So we're going to find out here in a little bit. We're going to go to the house, do a post-mortem on it, and uh, go from there. Okay, so we've got the motor on the bench. You guys probably aren't going to be able to hear this, but it always cogs when you rotate it due to the nature of the neodymium magnets inside. But it's loud. It's... Um,